Welcome in to the DNVR Avalanche Podcast. Uh, we got AJ, we got Eric, we got Rudo. As the Avs lose to the Montreal Canadiens, two to one. <laughs> uh, okay, AJ found something funny. It's just stupid, man. That's you win nine sports, in a row. Yep. You win a bunch of different types of games. So many elements of your team have been playing so well, and then this happens. Yeah, yeah exactly. You score in the first minute, and then that's that. Sports. Yeah, I mean, you're due to lay an egg, but damn. This one was the golden goose of egg laying, maybe. Sizable egg. <laughs> I, just a, not a particularly interesting game. Not a, not a whole lot to talk about, really, but we're going to do our best. Uh, let's start with the 60-second rundown. As mentioned, the F score in the first minute of the game, Nathan McKinnon continues his point streak. And to be honest, cool. I'm good. I'm good with tonight, man. I'm not going to be picky about it. The point streak is the coolest thing going on in hockey. So that's dope that Nathan McKinnon continues to do that. Unfortunately, the Avs are unable to finish another goal despite a number of quality opportunities in the first. And in fact, they even let in two goals. Montreal scores on their first shot of the game. Casey Middlestat gets worked and Eustace Ananen just didn't seem ready. And then a second goal where a puck just leaks through Ananen and causes chaos that eventually results with a puck in the net. Uh, two not great goals for Ananen to give up, but he doesn't give up any others. The Avs forward core and decor and the whole team just unable to put another puck in the back of the net particularly special teams unable to get the job done for the Avs. That's it. Don't need the full 60 seconds this time because there's not a ton left to talk about in this game. AJ, you kind of already mentioned it. <laughs> they won nine in a row. Yeah, I, I'm this, the people are like, oh, this is embarrassing. They just won nine games in a row. Just miss me with this. It's the NHL. These nights happen. You were due to have a night like this. Just just let it be. If your team goes 9-1 and one and you're embarrassed by them, I think that might be a you problem. I, hey, listen. Nothing was clean. Didn't go your way. No puck lock. I always say, Tiff's got my list of no-nos, and this one is not like a non-negotiable one, but usually if you have one or two of those, uh, in a game, it's tough to win the game, and it's the shift after a goal. I mean, you know, they start the game, they they score, and then what is it? Fifteen seconds later, they give up a goal. That that's a big no no. And it's know, such shit. a bad goal. It, yeah. It's a bad goal. Like, either you're not ready, puck drops, you're not ready. Uh, that's the play of the game for me. Uh, you had a team that's on their fifth game of the road trip, going home. You score right away. McKinnon streaks alive, the building's alive, and then you give up that goal. It just, it changed the whole complexity of the game, or, you know, mo- the whole momentum was upside down after that, and then they became a kind of a snooze fest. And they had a few chances, and, and we'll talk about it. The, the, the power play was awful, and you lose your momentum there. And But hey, shit happens. Like I always say, if you win nine out of 10, Boy, oh boy, you're playing 900 hockey. It's pretty good. Yeah, you so. win 9 out of 10, you go on the best playoff run of all time. I know regular season and playoffs are different. No, but yeah, but, but I'm but just saying. You're right. I mean, so it is what it is. It's a stinker, throw it out the window and call it a night. Yep. Hey, I, I do want to go back to the first period. I want to, uh, before we get into the goals against, you're three and a half inches from this game being four to two at the end of the first period. Yeah. Nathan McKinnon rings a post. Who else, who else hit a post in that period? Was it Miko? Miko hit the post, yeah. Uh, you had a great A opportunity from Miles Wood in front of the net that yeah. he just couldn't find a way to finish. Yeah. At least in the first period, it's not like the abs were playing poorly. The puck was just not going in the net for them. Yeah, and then the first half of the second period, they're really good. Yep. It was the second half of the game where the yep. good things stopped happening. 
Yep. Essentially. Um, I'm, I'm curious on your guys' thoughts on Annan tonight. Because I think you look at both of those goals and say they shouldn't go in. But he also only gives up two goals. Is that a, hey, guy played well enough and team let him down? Or is that a, hey, he needed to be one better tonight? Yeah. Both? No, I think that he, it, on, to be honest with you, is kind of a classic Pavel Francouz game. <laughs> he gives up two bad goals, but he's good the rest of the game. Yeah. And it's only two. He doesn't get any run support. Yep. Uh, if you don't, if you only give up two goals in an NHL game, you deserve to win. You did your job. Yeah, that's just. I don't. I don't care if both of them were scored from center ice. <laughs> you give two goals up in an NHL game, you deserve to win, and they just didn't do enough for him. It's rare you get no goal support because they usually have goal support. I mean, yeah. look at your gift season. You know he's got a lot of. But he's had a lot of goal support like tonight. It just wasn't in the cards for for Anning to get the W, but. Yeah, you're right. I mean, those two goals is, you know, eh. but he made a lot of point blank saves. And I thought he was, he kept him in. I had to keep it at two to give them a chance to come back. And he did. So for me, I got no problem with him today. Yep. It, the, the real problem that I would just have is the first goal is, yeah. well, he was you're a, just not awake. Dude, yeah. what is it? You just stand in there as a guy shoots into your five hole. A, and even that goal. It, that opportunity doesn't arrive if Casey Middlestad does no, Yeah, I, I think they, all they five play guys it, and the goalie. <laughs> they play already. it horribly. Yeah, it was it, It's played horribly by the skaters, but... It was bad. It's just not a particularly special But we're shot. talking about the goalie. Yeah, yes, yeah. but I mean, Annanen plays it so poorly yeah. that it's like, oh my gosh. Like, your skaters are going to break down and give chances up. That's always going to happen. Your goalie has to be prepared for that moment. And he doesn't do anything. He did, there's no read. There's no reaction. He makes no movement. He wasn't ready. It was so bad. Just sails through his five hole. Yeah. yeah. And you're just like, okay, well, that lead was fun. And then it was over. Yep. And then, and then they don't help him the rest of the game. They don't help him. So that's, it sucks, dude. It does. But also, you know, <laughs> welcome to being a goalie in the NHL sometimes. Yep. Sometimes you so got to shut them out the win. Sometimes you're one or two mistakes. That's it. Yep. You know, and on the other side, you see Sam Montebo plays fine. He gets bailed out by the post cool, a, a good number of times in the first half of the game. Yep. And, and then, then that's it. Doesn't let another yeah, one in. That was yeah. it. Uh, that was it for the Avs offense. They didn't show up the rest of the night. It's, I think the... Part of the frustration with the Avs offense, and I'm, we'll hold off on the power play aspect. We'll get to that in a minute. Yeah. But through the second half of this game, you saw individual efforts. The McKinnon charge to the net on the backhand side that he doesn't get to go. Uh, some other individual efforts of, uh, of hard work and guys trying to put it together. But it felt like the Avs as a team, I don't want to say they punted on the game because I don't think that's true, but any amount of cohesion just completely disappeared through the second half of this game. Yeah, there was no flow. Yeah. Um, the Avs, no jump. They weren't skating well anymore. There was no juice. They were, it was just, it was, it was really bad offense. Yeah, no no puck lock. And, and a lot of times you create your own puck lock. Uh, but tonight there was no puck lock. There was no, there was no flow. The PP sucked the life out of them. Um and then it just became one of those, like, all right, let's see what happens. But nothing happened. As a player in that locker room, Eric, I, I, obviously I'm sure they're not happy that they lost, whatever, whatever. But is there an underlying sense? Well, a lot of dudes in that locker room tonight feel like it just kind of wasn't their night. Yeah, and, and, and that's part of being a veteran in the NHL, right? You know what I mean? And I, I think that you're, you're not going to see – listen, you're not going to see guys – kick the freaking bottles around or the table around tonight and yap and close door meeting. At the end of the day, it's going to be like, same with the coaching staff. Hey, throw it out the, out the window. See you at practice tomorrow. Let's stay positive. And I'm telling you, someone said it. What we just said. If you yep. win 9 out of 10, you're a damn good hockey team. Let's just put this one behind. It didn't go our way. We know what we got to do, and we know we have to – be better more emotionally involved in the game you know what i mean like i think to just come from 
emotional win in a sense against Pittsburgh because it was such a big comeback, yeah. and it's like ah. And then you you start the game that way, and then all of a sudden it just became flat. Yep. You know what I mean? And not much. You know, I mean, nothing happened. So I mean, you can talk about it all you want till you're blue in the face. It's not going to do anything. I think veteran teams like the Avs and veteran players and the core players that they have, it's. It's a quick like, hey, see you tomorrow, and it's not the end of the world. And coach, like I said, he's walked through that room ten seconds. See you tomorrow, yeah. and guys, let's just not overthink this, and we know we can be better, and let's move on. You know, yep. move on, get ready for the Rangers. So, a much harder team. Yeah, and that's town. that's the real loss here. Is this was your last real easy this is a, part this was, of the season? This was in. Yeah easy opponent at the end of a long road trip like you this should have been a layup i know that st louis coming back is probably an emotional lift but For sure don't don't get this twisted they didn't play very well montreal wasn't any good in this game yep both of their goals are they scored two ugly goals and yeah, they that scored was it. they scored the one goal where the colorado goaltender afks and then the second goal where he just a puck, puck a puck sits there out, and then yeah. they yeah they wrap it around like it's it's kind of nonsense and, and and you watch them play the rest of this game and not do anything particularly special to right I, they have, at all yeah they have six minutes of power play time in the last eight of the of the third period to put the game away and don't even come close yeah like Montreal still bad they just didn't. The abs were just worse tonight. Yeah, they just didn't get it done. Yep. I felt they blocked a lot of shots to Montreal. Maybe, I don't know what the, the stats are, but I felt that there was nothing going to the net clean. Everything was hitting something. Yeah. I, I don't know what the stats are. In the are, second half of the game. Just kind sure. of felt yeah. like it, you know? Yep. Kind of felt like it. Yeah, it, and that's the type of stuff that Montreal has to do to win a game like this, right? So, it, I don't know. I wouldn't overthink it. I'll put it that way. No. Some of you in chat need a Coors Light. You need to chill. <laughs> All right? I understand being frustrated with a game, with a loss in a game that they probably shouldn't have lost. But y'all are losing it out here. Sometimes teams lose hockey games. I know it's a crazy thought. It does happen. Crack open a Coors Light and relax a little bit for post game. Take a breath. Anytime you need to chill, Coors Light is the beer made for chilling. The mountains literally turn blue when they chill. So go get yourself some, or better yet, stay at home and order it from CoorsLight.com slash DNVR. You can put in an order there. It lets them know we sent you over there, and Instacart will ship it right to your front door. It's not hard at all to do. Just saying. Get yourself a Coors Light. Make your life easier. Get the delivery that the Avs couldn't get <coughs> in this hockey game with Coors Light. Uh, certainly, when it's time to chill, Coors Light is the beer that I reach for. So when you want to hit that reset, grab the beer that's made to chill. Get yours Coors Light delivered straight to your door by going to CoorsLight.com slash DNVR. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. And then go throw some bets down. I actually hit two of my three bets tonight, even though the Avs lost. Anna then hit the over on saves, and Alex Newhook got a point. So... X player curse baby comes comes for my wallet again makes it work over on bet 365 uh go sign up with bet 365 yourself and use the dnvr 365 code when you sign up with that dnvr 365 code and bet five dollars on any nhl game you get 150 dollars in bonus bets to bet on whatever you like if you think it's going to be a weird abs game that you don't want to touch with your money go yeah. bet on nuggets go bet on the rockies the start of the baseball season is literally right around the corner Betting against the Rockies might be the thing to do, but go for it. Make yourself some money that way. Uh, do it with Bet365. Uh, of course, you must be 21 or older, physically located in Colorado. And if you or someone you know has a gambling problem, call or text 1-800-GAMBLER today. Second period of the DNVR Avalanche podcast. Tiff, I don't know if it's ready, but uh, if it is ready, we can hear Kale McCarr's thoughts on a pretty trudgy game. How we're able to handle that. Obviously, we um, we've been down going into the third period and stuff, but not being able to simplify and kind of getting frustrated it just shouldn't be our MO. So 
Um, for us, it's just getting back to being kind of that even keel type team. You guys have talked about focusing on yourselves and not necessarily on the opponent. Is this kind of an example of maybe not paying too much attention to the opponent coming against it tonight? No, I, I think um, we knew. I, I mean, even my dad was telling me like how, how good they've been lately, just in terms of just um, work ethic. So we're, we're always prepared going into the game. It's not like we're underestimating teams. And, um, you have to respect every team in this league, like, uh, like Jack said. Um, and for us, it's just uh, sometimes you got to simplify. I, I think that's what it came down to. Thanks, Thank Kale's thoughts there, uh, as much as anything. I don't think anyone on the Avs will be super happy with tonight, but as Eric already mentioned, I don't think you're going to overthink this one. No. Uh, let's get into the point I was tiptoeing around in the first period. Avs really were playing a pretty decent hockey game. I thought they played fine in the first period, other than Even, really the first, really the first goal. The second goal, I don't think is you, know, you didn't really make a mistake yeah, on outside your goal, of goal. He just needs to cover yeah. a puck. Like. That's it. Even through the first part of the second period, I think it was okay. Yeah. And then the first he, half of the second period, you're completely dominating them. Completely dominating them. And then you get a, you end up over two on the power play in that time. You get a third power play opportunity Bingo. where you basically don't even get into the zone for a full two minutes. And the jump is just gone. Yeah. You do nothing on it. One of the things that Bednar always says. I don't know that I agree with him when he says it, but he it's one of his axioms is that your power play is a reflection of your 5v5. That was not true If that tonight. was the case, yeah. if that was the case, that power play wouldn't have effectively ended the game. Yeah. Because they were, they were moving it around. They were controlling. They had jump. They had a plenty of energy. They were shooting. They were doing what they needed to do to, to tie the game. They got on that power play and were horrible. Yep. They couldn't. They, they couldn't. They, they couldn't get the puck into the zone. They would get it inside the blue line and, and immediately sent the other way. Immediately yeah. sent the other way. It was just. It was so bad. It was so bad. There was no hunger factor on that power play. And, no and urgency. That's what happens. I mean, there's no urgency. It is the National Hockey League. There's some good players. Some good teams. If you don't bring your intensity, if you don't bring, like, the third key before the game, we're saying, like, outwork your opponent. Well, that's – I wouldn't say that that was, like, especially on the power play. It's math, right? If you outwork your opponent, there's five of you, there's four of them. You should have the puck. And it's very simple. So, and if you don't have that, then, then you can nitpick after. Well, what else was wrong? But it started right there. There was just no hunger or intensity so, or passion. Chicken or the egg here. Does that power play need to be better as much for the reason of the Avs can not lose all their momentum through the rest of that period and ultimately the game? Or do the Avs need to be mentally tougher and figure out a way to continue playing effective hockey despite a brutal power play? Yeah, I mean, you have to have more resiliency than they did. Um, I think just after that, the confidence dropped. And they got really stubborn in how they were playing the game. Yeah, They weren't going hard to the net. They weren't trying to take a goalie's eyes away. There was nothing greasy happening. It was all pucks out high, trying to shoot it through bodies. And a team that, a, a Canadian's team that sucks. And they were packing the box and just trying to block a lot of shots. That was their most effective strategy. And it worked. Nothing, the Avs, the Avs didn't really do much to try to break that down. They stopped moving the puck around effectively, and they just started settling. Yep. And when you when you settle for the offense that the other team is trying to give you in the NHL, you're not going to score. You're just not going to score. And there's two parts to this too. Like, as much as it's a it's a momentum killer for your team, think of it on the flip side of things. For the other team, it's such a momentum builder. You know yeah. what I mean? Because you're like, hey, we talk about measuring stick all the time. The Avalanche have the best player in the NHL this year. They got uh, they got Makar Ranta. Their power play is electric. So you go and you kill a penalty, you're on the road. And, and like AJ said, it's an emotional game. St. Louis coming back for their team after his son was sick and, sorry, got hurt. And, you know, he'd been away from the team. And 
in uh, back today for this game, all of a sudden it just gives you a jolt of energy when you kill a penalty because you, you feel so good as much as there's a zap of energy on the other, on the other side. It gives you a jolt of energy if you're the if you're the team killing. So it goes hand in hand, and those are what the momentum swings are in a game. And and for me tonight, and for all of us here, that was a big uh, part of that game was you know the ineffectiveness of the power play. Yeah, it. I, ultimately, I think the conclusion there is it doesn't matter which one's better, whether it's the power play or the ensuing response, but. You just needed more to really have an opportunity to win this game. If you were Colorado, and I get the frustration there, right? You you just watch them play half the game, dominating this team everywhere but the scoreboard. And they don't get rewarded for that. And then they go out and ultimately don't get anything done in the second half of the second period, particularly bad. And then the third period just never quite geared it up again. Yeah, they only played one half of the third because the... Second half yeah, of the third, they, they were on the PK. Penalties. Fair enough. Fair enough. Is that is that a problem? Those penalties is? Uh, do you look at those and go, "That's a lack of discipline," or do you look at those and say, "It just kind of happened in the flow of the game. Nothing you're too worried." Well, the about. high stakes, bad luck. Like yeah. It's, uh, it's Walker in the third. Yeah, it's bad luck. And then the, who else was in the third? I'm trying to remember. Uh, it was the hook on the hands net front because they gave up a super high oh, danger yeah, yeah. chance. It's Walker again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So not too worried about no. the penalties. Didn't think so. Just just wanted to throw it out there. You look at the Avs lineup tonight. You know, I'm not going to say anyone played great. I don't think anyone brought their A game. No. But you're looking up and down the lineup. No. You you get nothing out of this second line yeah. of Middlestat, Nachushkin, and, uh, and Lekkanen. And I knew there was a little bit of swipping and swapping around. But is this something you're willing to live with down the stretch? Because, as we've talked so much about, you want Bednar to experiment. You want Bednar to try some of these things. Yeah. If you're okay with a night having a, a line having a tough night. Uh, well, and it's going to happen. Sure. Like, it's just natural, but I, yeah, I'm, I have no issues with them. That even through the nine game winning streak, they were trying stuff. Yeah. This, this concept that Bedner switched it all up and then they lost is nonsense. They literally put Drew on the top line right. against Pittsburgh for right. that comeback. <laughs> like, like they have been kind of tinkering with all four of the combinations. And I think they found the combination they want to to roll with for a bit in the bottom six. I would agree. It's just a matter of where are they in the top six now that, that the middle stat and the Shushkin. Yeah. Like where really done a ton. Yeah. And, and the Shushkin especially, I think has not done much in the last little bit here, a handful of games, three or four games now where not nothing's going on. Tough night tonight. Body language is bad too. He's slamming a stick. And He's I feeling it. Yeah, I think he just yeah. Emotional this, high to get back. You know what I mean? And probably like the rest of the team. You know, the last couple. You know, not the last couple of games because the team's been good. But but tonight, like kind of a like you said, emotional letdown. And <laughs> be ready to go Thursday for yeah. for a big game against a big opponent. And this was a bad Casey Middlestack game. It yeah. was. He, the, the defensive work on the first Montreal goal. A couple the, of opportunities that fell to the wayside. On yeah, the stick. work with the yeah. puck in the offensive zone was just not any good. It just shows you you got to be ready for every play in this league, and especially in playoffs. Like, you know, it's a big play. It's a shift after a goal. You can't lose. Again, go back to our keys, you know, every assignment right every face off every you know just be ready and be outworked he got outworked on that play it's a big play it's a play it's the play of the game for me you know what i mean like the turning point make it one one and but you can control that that's not bad puck lock it's you got beat out right yeah because you weren't ready you know this is kind of why i wanted to ask you about the not being our night type of conversation right because i think you go somewhere like buffalo and they're saying it's not their night 20, 25 times a year. Yeah. With the Avs, you get maybe five of those a year. Or you many, get to say it's not your night. How many truly bad losses do the Avs have this year? This I don't mean, one isn't even that bad. I don't, bad mean, I, don't, I, I don't mean games in which they didn't play very well. 
because those happen. Every team gets 10 yeah. exceptional games and 10 horrible games yeah. yep. every year. I mean, how many bad losses, like against teams that you're looking at going, oh, my God, they lost that. Really? They lost to them? Because by my count, this is three. Both Two to Montreal. Montreal and the Chicago game. Yeah. yeah. And funnily enough, one of the most frustrating losses of the season is now a Nashville team that has catapulted itself into the first wild card spot. Yeah. So maybe they were a little bit better than we were giving them credit for. Yeah, I, I mean... Just asking. St. Louis loss, you could argue, is still pretty bad. But. I mean, an A2 loss at home is always going to be a bad loss. St. But the Louis team is but not that's what, that what far I'm, out of a playoff That's what spot. I'm saying, because it, every, time, every time they lose to a bad team, this conversation of why do they play down, why do they play down. They really haven't lost that many bad games. Right. Yeah. They've, they've beaten like easily the majority of them. I guess the Arizona up four by four. Goal loss. That's a bad loss, too. Yeah, fair enough. But you kind of negate that because you're down by four against and Pittsburgh you win, and you win the game. Yep. Those games are almost Shit identical. Yep. So those, for me, I'm like, those essentially cancel each other out. If you're looking at the schedule, you lose a game that you shouldn't, you win a game that you shouldn't. Yep. But then again, I'm going to bring back what I haven't said in a long time. And good teams, especially in the playoffs, you don't lose two in a row. So it's the perfect opponent. Right? The first team to clinch a playoff berth is the New York Rangers tonight with their win. First team in the league. I don't care. Games played, whatever. But they are. You know what I mean? Like, yep. Meaning, like, it's a good team. This is a team that's played well all year. It's a good test. It, it, it's a powerful lineup. It's a team that's got some top-end talent. It's got great goaltending. Um, their special teams have been good. I don't have the numbers in front of me, but they're, to be at the top of the league, your special teams are good. Uh, I'll be shocked. Again, last I looked, they were fine. But um, good teams don't lose two games in a row because in playoffs, it's deadly. So this is a perfect time for them to put it behind Yeah, Show up at work tomorrow. I'm assuming they'll have a practice or not or a meeting or whatever it is and be ready to go Thursday for what should be a freaking awesome hockey game. You know? I hope so. Awesome. And that's... They're mostly done playing these bad teams. You have one more game against Columbus, and that's about it. Yeah. The rest of this, you're talking about gearing up for the playoffs? Well, they're going to be playing playoff teams. Yep. For the next three weeks. They're, either, they're playing playoff teams in Minnesota. And the one game in Columbus. Yep. So, going to have to earn it. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's good. Yeah, no, I agree. We're, we're kind of done. With this puffy part of the schedule, or okay, and, and they made hay while the hay was good, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. you need one more. You need one more win. Yep. To for this to be a successful homestand. Yep. But it isn't. It's it's. There's no getting around. This is a really annoying loss. Oh, totally. In the same way that it was a really annoying loss when they lost in freaking Montreal. Yep. They beat if they sweep <laughs> Montreal. It's one goal losses in each game, right? It's a it's a three and zero start to this homestand, and in that on that road trip, it was it would have been a four and one trip. And you've been great, and you have four extra points in the standings. Like it's very disappointing. Yep, but it also isn't indicative of their play over the last month. <laughs> yeah, which is why, again, an awful game to watch tonight. Totally. And a frustrating I, and disappointing If you watched result. The, uh, that entire game, I'm sorry. That sucked. That was not a fun game to watch. No, yeah. we didn't have fun watching this. We the second miserable. half of that game, everyone just could not wait for that thing to end. Like, We were miserable. <laughs> it was bad. Yeah, it, I mean, I was hey. going through my backpack on air and like, <laughs> yeah, right. like we didn't have anything to do. But let, let, And we're talking about JFK, whatever. But, and listen, <laughs> um, I went. <laughs> I forgot about that part yeah. already. Like you just said, it's a frustrating loss, yes, but you can't go on to say that it's unacceptable. Like you know, at the end of the day, it's it's a frustrating loss, and let's move on. Yep. <coughs> Got to be able to short term memory a little bit. Uh, Somebody in chat said that the Avs have eight losses this year against non playoff teams. That's not very many. When half of the league is a non-playoff team, yeah. that's pretty good. It's not that many. They just don't have that many losses in general. They've been yep. a 700 hockey team they for most overall, of the season. Yeah. Overall, like, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God. Oof. Well, 
you know what they say. Sometimes it's not a rep about raising the skill ceiling. It's about raising the skill floor. Usually is. <laughs> if you need to I raise your floor, I guess, I don't know. Does that work? Call 1-800-588-2300-EMPIRE. Hell yeah. <laughs> We're just becoming immune. <laughs> yeah. It, if I keep doing it enough, you can't tell the, all the off-key notes everything there go to empire today to get your floorings whether they be hardwood or carpet empire today has you covered and you'll get 350 dollars off your new floors when you go to empire today.com slash dnvr so make sure you let them know dnvr sent you over there one of the biggest mm. things about uh empire today is that they only carry the highest quality products they don't carry a bunch of junk that you have to sift through and then realize it's not even something you're going to want they only carry products that are worth having so i really do love that about empire today i also love the fact that they have their virtual floor designer online where you can measure out your room put in the measurements and then project floors onto that room to see what it will look like in your space of course they also do in-home estimates and they have professional installers have everything that you need when it comes to getting new floors so head on over to empiretoday.com slash dnvr to schedule a free in-home estimate today get that 350 and fifty dollar discount with that dnvr code and head over to that website empiretoday.com slash dnvr for details once you've decided on your new flooring maybe it's time to give a call to American Financing. Uh, look, I get it. Sometimes you got to get a new house, got to get a new home, got to get a new house. Sometimes you got to move, whether it be for uh, work or for other reasons. That happens. Uh, if you're waiting to get out and shop for a new home, the market is starting to warm up, and that's where American Financing comes in. Interest rates have finally dropped into the fives, making the new homes more affordable, but you need to get started today. American Financing can get you pre-approval in 24 hours or less, and their salary-based mortgage consultants are in it for you and can get you into a home for as little as $1,000 down. Their entire job is just to save you money. That's all that they're trying to do out here. Uh, and they're a local Colorado-based company, too, so you can support local. They are licensed in all 50 states, so you can get them to help you anywhere, though. Uh, they've helped thousands of customers save real money and put themselves into a better financial position, and they've been doing so for 20 years five years call american financing today all it takes is a 10 minute no obligation phone call uh, to get you into the best investment you can make in colorado a new home call today at 303-695-7000 and let them know dnvr sent you that's 303-695-7000 or go to americanfinancing.net slash dnvr nmls 182-334 nmls consumer access.org apr for rates in the five start at 6.799 percent for well-qualified borrowers call 303-695-7000 for details about credit costs and terms third period of the dnvr avalanche podcast Ooh. i'm gonna be honest man there's really not a ton to talk about in the second half of this game they yeah. didn't play very well that is what it is montreal didn't play very well yep it was a really looking at the clock. Yeah, <laughs> it was so sloppy and boring. Don't love it, but it, it was it is what it is. You got to move on. From Colorado's perspective, well, you know what, Eric? Let me ask you this. I don't know if you have ever went on a nine game winning streak in your career. I assume you probably did. What is that bounce back game like? You're you're on your good winning streak. You lose. How do you get yourself ready for that next one to turn it around? Well, whenever you go on a 9-game, 10-game, 11-12 game, you're always getting away with stuff. Always, sure. I mean, I mean if you the think... The guys were down four goals a game ago, and they won. If you think it's like perfect shit, hockey, <laughs> it, it usually catches up to you. You know what I mean? And, and that's kind of what tonight was. So, But I always say, and I said it 10 minutes ago, and I'll say it again, good teams don't lose two games in a row because... It is a known thing in the locker room. It's talked about. It's talked about tomorrow practice. It's talked about right before the next game Thursday against the Rangers. And it's talked on the bench during the Ranger game. You don't lose two in a row. So you got to bring your heart rate. You got to bring your energy. You got to bring your uh, professionalism, uh, you know, up, so to speak, to the game. Because your streak's over now. You're only as good as your last game. It's a loss to the Montreal Canadiens. So get ready. You haven't done squat. Get ready to go. 
and be ready to go put your working boots on and go freaking work a hockey game where if you do the things right with the talent that you have, you should get on top. But that's a good opponent you got coming in. Yeah. The Rangers are a good opponent, so you're going to need to be on top of your game. And like I said, you go on a streak like this, you've gotten away with stuff. It's just life. It's not just the avalanche. It's anybody that goes on a streak, you know. For sure. Even with Mac, even if he, 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 even Mac streak, you know what I mean? There's games that he, he wasn't on top of. You know what I mean? There's, there's two empty net points yeah. in two games against Vancouver Remember and Denver. That? Yeah, like, I mean, I'm just saying, you know. Those so are his only not, points. You know, so it's not always perfect, but it's how you respond to to a, a game where you're not perfect, which they weren't tonight. Mm. So now you just look for a bounce back game Thursday, and, and it starts now. You know what I mean? It doesn't start Thursday at... When you walk into the freaking rink at 5 o'clock, it starts now. Because you have to have that mentality that it's not. I'm, I go back mm. to Avalanche 1.0 all the time. That was such a big thing here. You know what I mean? Like with, and that's Patty Wad, Mike Keane, and Claude Lemieux. And, 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 and you could feel it at practice because it was a different aura, a different intensity that, you know, and then. And, they looked at you if you did something wrong or you took a different route or wrong route. They'd be like, what are you doing? What are you doing? We just lost last night. We got to win tomorrow. And it's like, so you kind of get used to it. Obviously, the Avs have that pedigree. They've won two years ago. They have that championship pedigree. Yeah. And they know. And, and they know. And, and you know who knows? The new guys that come in and that go to practices and training camps and they're like, holy smokes. These guys are demanding this every day, and that's why I'm not worried. Also, I, I went and tweeted out their season in 10-game segments the other day. Five so, of the seven segments have been 700 or better hockey. <laughs> in this segment, they are now one and one. Like, Great. <laughs> Sorry that they just finished wrapping up a segment where they went, what, nine eight and, and, two, nine and one? Nine yeah. and one. Okay. You chill. <laughs> Straight up vibing at yeah, that point. It's fine. <laughs> this sucked. There's a few of these every every single year. You have a couple of just, nope, the team didn't show up. Yeah. Yep. Disappointing. It yeah. happens. It's, yeah. not, it's not fun, but. It's, it's, it sucks to watch. It sucks to, sucks to sit there. It sucks to sit and wait for two days. Oh. But you have a really exciting rest of your weekend here for this home slate. Yep. And then you go to Dallas. Big games. Like, all right, great. It, you shouldn't have any problem getting up for what's next. This is going to be awesome. Games that could potentially define the seating in the Central Division. There's a Winnipeg game down the road too that yep. matters there. But it's going to be uh, it's going to be a fun run. To be honest with you, Eric, you're the big Curtis McDermott defender on the show. Yeah, oh, me. I gotta go. I, I he's not on the team anymore. Obviously. You have a New York team coming with Matt Rampey. Do the Avs have a response to that guy? Do they need a response to that guy? Is that guy going to play? I mean, he played the other night. I don't know if he'll play against I know he's been. I know he's been kind of in and out of that yeah. lineup. So He brings energy. He does his job. You know, he, he's there for that. He, you know, he, he can play. He's a decent hockey player. You know, it's, a, it's actually a <sighs> nice story if you dig deep, deep, deep into his story, you know, what is... His dad passed away a few years back, and it's a fun story. It's a tight family, and um, I uh, and he's breaking into the league, and he's trying to, you know, never go back to the minors. What we talk about all the time, making him. I don't care what the impression is, and he's trying to do it where he doesn't need. But I don't think the Avs need to worry about it. You know, what I mean, I think that the Avs are plenty team tough. You know, you got Manson, you got Duhame, you got guys like I mean, guys that can respond to anything. Uh, but I, I I don't think that. Sure, if Dermy's there, it's a little different. I mean, and and I, is and, it? Well, I'm just saying. We I, saw I, it already not matter at all for New Jersey. For Jersey, I know. So that's why I'm saying I'm not going to get down that path. But but Bruto, thank you uh, for bringing it up. <laughs> um, but what I'm saying is, um, Rempy's doing his job, and just like. Somebody else on the abs is going to do their job. And you know what I mean? I, I, I don't see anything there. Plus, Rempe's going to have to learn. He can't fight those guys every night in the NHL. And, you know, like he did his first couple of weeks. Yeah. You know, it's crazy. I mean, it's a rhythm of absolutely bonkers. But 
Yeah, I think he's a decent hockey player, and I think the Avs can just go. And, you know, you can see a lot of tough hockey and energy and, you know, on, from both sides without, you know, having fisticuffs, you know. I, I want to touch on this con comment from Lando up a little bit because I think it's an interesting conversation. I don't. I, but my point being, the best teams in the league aren't the best teams in the league because they play their A game every night. Yeah. They're the best teams in the league because they find ways to win when they're playing their yes, B and C games. Because they win games on Last B nights. Game. Yep. Exactly. It's any team in the league, if they play their A game, they're probably going to win that. You're night. down by four goals. My question, not, my question would be game. about this comment about, oh, they don't have any identity. Who has an identity? I mean, I, I don't. Identity? I, I would say they have. Yeah, I don't identity. say anything about the identity. Yeah, I mean, who has an identity and who do you think are the best teams in the league? Well, the abs have an identity. The fastest, they play the fastest of the fastest team yeah. in the league. That's their identity. Yeah, I, and they're built on superstars. The abs, I, I think the abs have a pretty clear cut identity yeah. with the ability to play with extreme speed. Their defense activating into the offensive exactly. zone. This year, they've certainly found an identity in being able to come back in any situation. Yep. Well, we all love Florida, right? Yeah. Florida blows a three-two lead in the third period tonight. To Boston. Yeah, they've lost like five of their last six, I think. Like, yeah, they're four, five, and one in their last ten. Yeah. They're not playing their best hockey right now. Do they lack an identity? Nope. Is anybody worried about Florida being competitive in the postseason? This is a these, – these things that people are upset about right now in this moment are I watch the abs every single day. I don't watch other teams very much. And so I am hyper-focused on every single little aspect of the abs that may not be perfect. And that's fine. You should always be trying to get better, but give me a break. I just, this is, for me, this is too much negativity for a team that just won nine games in a row. I would agree. I, I think Chad is on it's, the heavily negative It sucks that it didn't side. get to 10 because you definitely would not feel that bad if they lost to the Rangers. But then the conversation would be, oh, well, they can't beat good teams. Yeah. If you're looking for negative things, you can find them on every hockey team on earth. But... It, it, to me, I think the Avs have proven time and time again this year that they are one of the best teams in the NHL. Yeah. And we'll talk about that whole list more tomorrow, by the way. Tune into the show tomorrow. But it, it's hard for me to feel anything really negative about this team post-trade deadline. They've been outright it's their first loss. amazing since the trade deadline. Yep. And it's not like you went here and got absolutely blown out no. by the Habs either, right? You lost a 2-1 game, which, yeah, you should have played better. You yeah. should have been able to win. No, no, but it isn't the same feelings as a you just lost 8-2 to St. Louis. You hit a couple of big posts at big moments. Those ones go in. It's a different game. It just didn't go your way. End of story. Yep. And it's not that complicated. And they it don't isn't. waste that much really time isn't. either on it. because. I think it's extremely straightforward. You move on, and you're thinking about the Rangers tomorrow practice. You address tonight for five minutes with the team, maybe at the most, and then you moved on to the Rangers. I mean, yep. because if you live in the past in this league, you'll never evolve. It, it, there's too many games. You just have to move on and, and correct it and then go, and, and you know what you did. They know what they did wrong. It's not. The power play... Don't think those guys are in the shower right now and saying like, "Oh yeah, we got robbed of the power play tonight." You know, they know they suck. They know they stunk, and that's the beauty of it. Because then they don't let that keep them up tonight, and you know they'll still go to bed. They're still gonna get some good sleep, and then they'll just address it and then move on from it, and then be kick ass again on the power play. I'm just talking about the power play. All right, you know what the difference is between Eric and everyone else on this pod. He scored goals in the NHL. I mean, that is a difference, but not the difference that I was going for. Oh, Eric, my bad. Has, Eric has a family. He's got kids. Mm -hmm. Cook him, cook him meals every day. Yes, do all that for him. The rest of us, normal humans, we've got Factor. Yes, <laughs> Factor, uh, the a fantastic meal service that all of us here use. AJ, he's, he's all about it. He loves it. Tiff, our, our producer as well. Our she giant said, factor box got delivered today. There you go. There my, it is. My first leaving? factor box got delivered today, and I'm very excited to try it. Yeah. yeah. There or you you're go. You're leaving. What? You're leaving. 
Yeah, I've got to eat four meals in the next two days. All right. That's why I didn't get groceries, because yeah. I'm just going to eat got nothing factor. but factor. I'm actually going to eat factor when I get home tonight. There you go. So. Same. <laughs> Jump on the factor meal kit box. It's just two minutes to get a factor meal. Good to go. You can do it really quick if you're trying to eat on the run. It's great for lunches. I personally love their lunches. They were super duper good. Nice to get a little bit of a, a, a full meal. Four square, four full square meal. I don't remember what the phrase is. I don't know. I know it's, it ended up being weird. Super easy to do. There's no mess. There's no prep. You just throw it in there and you're good to go. Uh, make sure you're getting in with the discounts on Factor when you head to factormeals.com slash abs50 to get 50% off. That is code abs50, factormeals.com slash abs50 to get your 50% off your Factor meal kits. Once you've got your factor meal kit all up in your belly, feeling good, turn on the TV to Fubo TV. Watch yourself some whatever you want, to be honest. I would say, you know, Colorado sports, they do have the Avs and Nuggets, of course, and soon to be Rockies. But they also have just regular television channels, over 140 different channels, news, movies, television, music, more, all covered with Fubo TV. Use the QR code on screen or go to Fubo TV dot com slash dnvr to get 15 percent off <coughs> your first month of fubo pro if you're not sure about it they have a free trial you can go try it out see what it's like there's no requirements they, you don't have to do anything special you just sign up do the free trial when you love it you can get the fubo pro it comes with a thousand hours of dvr too so fubo just has you covered fully when it comes to your television especially here in colorado go check them out today fubo tv.com slash dnvr Let's go to the Super Chats. Got quite a few for a loss. You guys usually don't give as many, but thank you very much. We appreciate that. $5 from James, who clears throat and says, well, that Montem Blue, ah, I'll see myself out. That's funny. It's a good uh, one. I think it's a good one. I'm here for it. Thank you for the five. $2 from Wyo, who says, AJ, do you like armpits? I do not. The more you know. <laughs> armpits? I don't know. Is that a candy? Don't. <laughs> Just let this one be. $2 from Christian who says, Anamin greater than Georgiev. Okay. Don't know about that, but he wasn't the only problem tonight. We'll put it that way. Uh, $5 from Acid who says, Every team is filled with NHL caliber players any given night. Either team is fully capable of winning. That is the way it goes. Yep. That's right. Hockey, baby. Well, and if... Losing to Montreal is so inexcusable. They've won 27 mm -hmm. this season. Yep. 25 against teams not named Colorado. I, in a full season, every team in the NHL wins at least 20 games, man. It's just the reality of, of the league. It's going to happen. So. Well. San Jose. Even, even San Jose has a chance to get there. San Jose has 16 with 11 to play because they're going to lose tonight. Still has a chance to get Probably won't. And then we can call yeah. San Jose not a, not a real team. So, it's fine. The worst record of all time, I believe it was the expansion Washington Capitals. Yeah. They won like four games. It was like outrageous. Oof. Yeah. Uh, the modern record, the Avs have the worst point total with the 48-point season. San Jose is going to push it. It's going to get close. It's going to get close. They've got the 11 games to get eight points to tie. We'll see. I don't know what their schedule looks like, but. Well, they haven't done it at that pace this year, so. They did just blow a four-goal lead to Chicago, so. That was uh, one where you were like, ooh. Yeah, that's tough. Uh, $10 from Cody, who says, not all landlords are POS, Jake. Is that to the Jake that I think it's to? I have no idea. Yeah, if Wyo is also asking about armpits, then something is taking place. The Discord is on one tonight. Something is yeah. taking place in the Discord, and this is all <laughs> just fun and games for them. So at least somebody's having a good time. <laughs> well, I love it. <laughs> Ten dollars from our TV. Uh, I was hoping the game would make my day better. It did not. Thank uh, God McKinnon kept his streak. Hoping Fallout 4 will provide me some bit of enjoyment tonight before bed, LOL. Fallout 4 is a good game. I enjoyed it. Much better than 76. So at least there's that. 
Uh, and then $2 from Melanie who says, on to the next. Go Avs. Thank you very much for all of your super chats. You guys are always extremely generous. We appreciate that a ton. If you want to support us in other ways, continue, consider becoming a DNVR diehard today. Uh, obviously, you get a ton of awesome stuff, including a shirt with your diehard membership. You get discounts at the bar, discounts at the shirt store, access to that Discord we were just talking about, and a bunch of other excuse me, awesome stuff as well. Plus, Eric just dropped uh, his first piece of diehard content, breaking down Sean Barron's for us, giving us the, the pro scouts look yeah. at the Avs prospect. So go check that out if you're a diehard member over on ddnvr.com. That's all I got. We'll keep this one pretty brief. Any final thoughts? Any Anything you guys want before we get out of here? No? Move on. Moving on. I'm really excited for tomorrow. Okay. Because it's not today. There you go. <laughs> That's one way to look at it, man. Also, <laughs> Eric with the shaved face funny. is reminding me so much of late season Parks and Rec, Ron Swanson, when he shaved his face. <laughs> I looked over at the beginning of the pod and I was like, ah. That's not what he said. Ah. He walked in tonight and he's like, what WTF? <laughs> um, like, what? If you guys didn't catch the show yesterday, that was a much better show yep. than... Go watch Chris McFarlane talk about cool things and not this terrible hockey game. Lots of good stuff in that interview. Not my beard. Tune in tomorrow where we're doing the top five cup contenders. Despite this loss, I think the Avs might still be on that list. We are out of here, though. We appreciate y'all, and we will talk to you tomorrow. We all silly like the mayor. 